same way that I was doing here still, my mentoring program, my basketball training, and uh, working on a book, working on finishing up on a book. Nice, so yeah. your basketball training, major prep, six year anniversary, yes. celebrating it June 16th. Right? You're doing it up at Reservoir Park. Tell us a little bit about what's going to go on. What can we expect? Um, well, it may be up sixth anniversary, six years already. Um, but it's, it's been an event that's, that's been growing. And what it does is it, it provides a platform for the youth to kind of perform and do what they do. Okay. Kind of, um, and also to come and get some education on character development, life skills, um, or even also more of a community building type of event. Where the, the youth come, the different politicians there, councilmen there, different um, pillars in the community also come and kind of really unite as a, as a, as a community as one. Um, this is six years in, and it's been growing ever since. Nice. It's, been, it's been growing. We have again a lot, a lot of the youth who um, are very talented, student athletes, and my emphasis is on student athletes because if you don't you have um, your background in sports situated, you're very darn right, you can't be an athlete anyway. So I think it's on student athletes. And we just have a great time there. Great, great time. Great, great community um, event. And it's just a great time to fellowship. Nice, nice. So you're talking about, you know, major prep has been growing. So walk us a little bit through that journey. You know, where did it come from? What made you want to start it? And, you know, what has it evolved into six right. years later? Um, it started 2010, uh, 12, mm -hmm. 2012, I guess this long. Jeez. But what happened was it was it kind of, it was, it, was, it was truly a, God sent. Um, I'm, I'm the youngest of four four boys, well, four men now, all majors. Um, and major prep just stemmed from my father passing away. It was May 9, 2008, when he had to forego heart surgery. And his last words to me were, "Be, I want to be there for you. And at 21, I can't believe I was, I didn't understand that he meant spiritually, not just physically. And I called May 9, 2008, uh, one, of the one of the worst days of my life and best days of my life. Because it was worse because my father passed away, but it was the best day because it turned me into a man. Um, it made me really have to level up. And with the support of my mom and my brothers, it allowed me to come up with the idea of major preparation. Okay. Where the model is putting the major work for major results, never pays all parts of life. So mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, you have to prepare for life. You prepare for your journey, prepare for your destiny. And those are all different characteristics that my father installed in myself and so many other young men and women throughout the community. And it was about four in the morning one day and I was just kind of at a crossroad, not knowing what to do with my life next. My father just passed away, um, just got done bawling out tears. And it was just, I had no more tears, of, no more tears to shed. And my heart started pounding. I just kept thinking about what my dad wanted me to do. And I was thought, thought about all the characteristics and lessons that he taught us about how you have to put in work in order to get results anything you do in life. If it's in the classroom, if you want to uh, be an interviewer, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an uh, athlete, a teacher, whatever the case may be, you got to put in work to get the results. Nice. And it clicked. It made the work, it made the results. Nice. It, nice. it clicked. And, and it, it, it just it stemmed into my mentoring program, my fitness training. And then currently right now I'm basketball training, which really, really blew up. Nice. And that's what you're continuing to do down in North Carolina. So we can say, you know, major prep isn't even just Actually, here Actually, the, the major prep program was my mentoring piece. Okay. It wasn't even a basketball program. Okay. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like major prep is starting to really evolve into exactly what I wanted it to be. And it's giving me different, different lessons and different experiences within major prep. So I continue to allow it to evolve into not only my plan for it, but God's plan for it. Yeah, my nice. I mean, we definitely appreciate you here. You know, you're you're definitely um, one of those names that we mentioned when we mm -hmm. talk about mentors, you know, mentors who are from here, who know the kids here, who, right. you know, really feel a connection with these kids and want to give back. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess it's safe to say your dad, mm -hmm. um, number one, one of your, uh, you know, most influential people in your life, right. one of the most influential people. Um, who were some of those other mentors for you growing up that helped you know, mold you into, into Brian Majors, be Brian Majors? Uh, most importantly, my brothers. Okay. My brothers, Wes, Garrett, Eric, Andre, um, Brian Smooth, David Green, some of the guys who are the closest to me mm -hmm. possible. Um, I'm the youngest of a lot of guys that hang around yeah. and, and, our, and our, our crew. Right. 
and they just they really taught me a lot about life in general, how to conduct myself. Mm -hmm. So shoot, super shout out to those guys because they, without them I wouldn't be who I am. Okay. And then along with Des Mangus, Sean Lewis, mm -hmm. Chris Franklin, Will Chase, um, Fonzo um, Burnett. Um, I mean the list is so right. the list is so long of my mentors, Leland Nelson. Uh, it's the list goes on and on, like literally. And that's one of the things that helped me really evolve was a lot of people put their hands on me. And then when they say it takes the village, it really does. Yeah. And I mean, I, I lose track of how many mentors I have right. because I allow people, well, not even I allow, but God put the right people in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I just I just soaked up wisdom from them forever. Right, so what do you think about the um, the current state of mentorship um, in Harrisburg, in North Carolina, just overall, you know, do you think we still have those strong mentors? Do you think it could, it could be better? Um, um, I, I think we can always have more mentors. Okay. I think we can all, always have more mentors. Mentors um, and, and mentors who are not trying to live through their mentee, mm -hmm. but they're trying to really incorporate their mentee with lessons that's going to really truly help them succeed in what they're doing mm -hmm. and on their journey versus the mentor's journey. Okay. I was blessed, again, blessed that those mentors who didn't make me become them but they allowed they just taught me lessons that allow me to become who I'm supposed to be, mm -hmm. versus me being a direct reflection of them. I'm a, I'm a direct reflection of them, but I'm not growing up to be exactly who they are. Exactly. They're giving me the tools to become who I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, there's definitely a, a wide variety of great mentors available in the, in the city of Harrisburg, um, especially over at the Boys and Girls Club with, with Mark Hawthorne, who's the, um, one of my biggest mentors also. Nice. Um, but. I mean, we, I think we just have to really seek out more mentors. I mean, there's, there's plenty out there, and all of them don't have to be super in the public type mentors. There's a lot of mentors who names I, I, I would never announce because they don't want me to announce their names. Okay. And there's just a lot of guys like that as well. And uh, I just think that the parents got to allow, allow, allow different men and women, for the, in the female's case, to put their hands on a child and bless them as well. That's awesome. So what kind of mentor do you aspire to be? Do you, you know, do you want to be that kind of low-key, I was um, just around, or? I think right now I'm, I'm really thriving in being in the public with, with my mentorship. Okay. Just because I'm, I'm building a brand as well. Mm -hmm. But I think that once I get to the, once I get the brand to a level of um, standard I want it to be, or I know it can be, then I, could, then I think I'll start to like ease off okay. and I have other people who'll be able to really thrive within the, the, the company and being mentors as well, then I can like start to put my hands on people and right. not want any credit for it. Not even not that I do it for any credit now, but not to have any uh, any um, like attention, and attention on it. So yeah, it's, that's, it's that's, the, the attention, I love it right now because it's, it's building a brand, but I definitely want the brand to get to a point where I can back off and, and still touch people's lives nice. without any attention of it. Nice, so going back into the sports a little bit, um, you have an education background. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Right. So, um, what is your advice, I guess, to those young men um, who are, you know, wanting to go pro, you know, before they finish their education? That's always a conflict. I know with parents and with right, family members and, and educators. So, what are what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on it: uh, if you are blessed enough to reach the professional level before graduating technically in mm -hmm. four years, do it. Mm -hmm. But don't, there's still time to, in the summertime and off season, to still take classes so you can still graduate okay. in due time. Um, was one of the guys from the Cavaliers just now who um, just graduated. He's in the NBA playoffs right now and just graduated college and missed practice so he can go to the graduation. Mm -hmm. So there's, even though you can pursue your career, it's not saying you have to stop your education. Mm -hmm. um, Shaquille O'Neal got a PhD, so if you can, if you, are blessed to go to the league at any level or professional level, go. Yeah. But never lose track of your education because just as quick as you got to a professional level, it can be all taken away at the same at the same snap of a finger. Yeah. So let's talk about the book a little bit though. What is okay. the name of this book? Um, the book is called Training for Triumph. Okay. And it's gonna be based upon just different modes and characteristics on how to train for life, mentally, physically, most spiritually, and financially. Okay towards your destiny, towards your dreams, and what to look out for on your journey to success. Uh, 
It's great. It, it, it's great. It, it's, I'm excited. It's, I'm, I'm excited about it too. And, right. and the, the book, st the story behind the book is phenomenal. Okay. How it came about and. Uh, I gotta say that for I gotta say that for the book signing. I gotta say that part for the book for the book signing. But okay. after, as soon as I finish writing it, I got challenge to write another one. Mm -hmm. And so I have two books ready. I'm nice. gonna drop one this year, and then um, give it a while. And I'm gonna drop the second one right after here, not, not long after as well. All right. And who's this book for? Is it just for um, anybody, for the young person, for the the book is a conversation. Okay. It's a conversation with um, targeted towards the ages. Eight to eighteen-ish. Mm -hmm. That that those children who have a dream and can really understand what's happening. I mean, it's but it can also go towards that mother, who, who, that single mother, or that single father, or that grandma who's trying to help their child or, or their grandson evolve as well. I mean, the, the, I mean, I I went hard on this book, so I, I let it all out. I, I let love it all the out. excitement. I'm excited. I, I have to really be here. Uh, you know, I know you're going to publicize it, but everybody knows the book signing is because we're going to be. There. I'm, I'm right, excited about it. It's the whole city of Harrisburg <laughs> taking a bus and coming to this book signing. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. though, that's awesome. But you, yeah. you have a lot going on. So what what motivates you? You know, what pushes you to constantly want to empower people, to motivate them, mm -hmm. and, you know what I mean, make them better and make them believe that they can be better? Um, my, biggest, my, my biggest motivation, my why, is my mom's smile. Okay. Like, that, she's truly my, my heart and soul, and just to see how strong she's always been, especially after our father passed away. It's, I have nothing to worry about, nothing to complain about, because I see her smile. And when she sees her sons, not only myself, or their, their other daughters, um, just doing what they love to do, like I put a smile on her face. Like I truly believe that my mama's smile makes me go harder each and every day. That's why I'm six years in, I didn't ever wander. I'm, I'm quick. Yeah. And this is to death do me part nice. because my mom's smile was like really embedded in my head. When I close my eyes, I can see her smile. I wake up at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning and I can go work out and get my day started because I know that something's going to brew me to make her proud mm -hmm. and to make her smile. And seeing that smile, it's like it's the most beautiful thing I could ever see in my life. So what do you think that single ingredient is to your success? You know what I mean? Like what, how did you get to, to this? Six years later. Um, my motto for this year, I think, really sets it off. And the motto for 2018 has been stay focused, remain humble, and keep working, keep working, keep working. Okay. And um, those three, those three aspects of to be by just being focused on your focus at all times, mm -hmm. by remaining humble, even as you, even as I excel and make make power move, make major moves, um, and. Just keep working. Just keep working towards forever. Just keep working. Just enjoy life. Keep working. And those three, those three aspects of my life is, is, has been my secret ingredient in a, in a, in a nutshell. In a summary, nice. stay focused, man. Home. Keep working. Keep working. Keep working. So um, I'm sorry. I switched gears again. No problem. Let's keep um, switching. <laughs> I know. So I did read that you are now a Harlem Globetrotter. I am. A proud member of the Washington Generals, okay, which is a part of the Harlem Globetrotter um, okay. National Organization. Nice, but we are the bad guys. Okay, we're the bad guys who go out and try to beat the Harlem Globetrotters each and every night. Nice, so nice. um, and one of your mentors, Chris Franklin, right? Harlem Globetrotter, Chris or Franklin, was he Chris Franklin is a living legend. Yeah, and I don't want anybody to get that confused yeah. with what he has done for the community of Harrisburg, but what he has done for the world in mm -hmm. general. Like the Harlem Globetrotters has been around for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the history behind it is is phenomenal. And Chris Franklin is a huge part of the history yeah. behind the Harlem Globetrotters organization and across the world. Nice. His signature thumbs up, you can go anywhere in the world and see them thumbs up and you have to think about Chris Hamlin Franklin. Yeah. Like it's mandatory. Right. Well, no matter who you are, you have to think about that Chris Hamlin Franklin. Right. And the, uh, what he's done for not only our community, but for the world has been Tremendous. Even for myself, he's been a huge mentor of mine. I used to go to his camps. I trained at his camp, and um, I mean, since I was even especially when I was in college, he was a, he was always been the man of his word. He always would tell me, "Be when I make it, I'm gonna put you on," because I I took time to understand who he was when I was young, and I took time to really take heed to his guidance and his wisdom that he would give me, and. 
some people waver from certain people's stature and, and their guidance, but I never waver. Mm -hmm. I never wavered from any of my mentors' guidance. I didn't take all of their guidance, their right. wisdom, but Chris Franklin was the one person who, if he's telling me something, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. And he told me to always um, keep God first, stay away from drugs, uh, get education, respect my parents, teachers, coaches, mm -hmm. and follow my journey. Nice. And now you're going up against them with the... Right? He's gonna be the bad guy if I tear him up every night. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That's fun though. It is. Nice. It's a great opportunity. Nice. It's a great opportunity to travel the world, do what I do. That's dope. Do what I love to do. Play basketball, mentor, put, put smile on people's faces. Yeah. And it's uh, a dream come true. So speaking of traveling, um, where is your favorite place in the world? Where's the best place <sighs> that you have been? Like if you weren't right here, right now, because you know this is awesome. This is. No. <laughs> this is. But where would you be? I've been a variety of places. Yeah. Um, that's hard. I mean, do you like cold? Do you like hot? I just did the both. Oh, from man. Being in Pennsylvania, from being in Pennsylvania right, with the cold winters to being in Charlotte with yeah. nice, warm yeah. spring, summer, fall evenings. Like I, I learned to adjust to my environment wherever it is. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to make the most out of any situation wherever I am, anytime. That's a good mindset. Um, yeah, so it's hard. Okay, so where's the last place that you traveled then? The last place was the Dominican Republic. Okay, and how was that? It was a it was a phenomenal experience. Mm -hmm. Um and it was a real humbling experience. Okay. Um I say humbling because I got to see how they live there. We think we live in property. We have property here, but we I truly believe we have nothing on Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. On um the area I was in and but to see their smiles in their faces with what we would call nothing. Right. They, they really believe is their everything. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've saw little girls from three, four years old by themselves running up to people with just a piece of paper that they color mm -hmm. and with smiley faces, not wanting anything, but just wanting to give what they color. Yeah. I've seen little boys in cut up t-shirts, one sock on and smiling, That's waving. Cool. So it just put me in a place that I was always grateful and blessed for what I had, but it put me to a whole different perspective. Right, right. All right, so now we're going to get into some fun stuff. Okay, fun stuff. All right, I so like I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you two options okay. uh, for some of these questions. Um, some of them is just going to be a quick question, but you got to answer it super fast. All right, All right no, fast. exactly. It's just ah, like those, okay. right, the rapid fire. So not even time to think, just say first thing that comes to your mind, all right? All right, you ready? I'm ready. You sure? Positive. Jay-Z or Nas? Jay-Z. Tupac or Biggie? Biggie. Iron Man or Captain America? Iron Man. Favorite pro athlete of all time? Allen Iverson. Favorite athlete right now? Ray John Rondo. So of the teams that are in the running for the championship in, in the NBA, who's in your starting lineup? Ooh. Mm, top five, top five. <laughs> ah, okay. Come on, top five. Okay, okay, okay. KD. Uh huh. LeBron. Okay. Steph. Okay. Ah. Ah. They have to be healthy. KD, LeBron, Steph. Mm -hmm. uh, dang, two more. Oh, two man. More. KD, LeBron, Steph. The rest is hard. Kawhi Leonard. Okay. And, uh, and Davis. Okay, I like it. I like it. Who's taking the finals this year? Warriors. Think so? Probably. All right, why? Yeah. Not this is the only one. I'm going to let yeah, you explain. Like I got everybody. I got what it takes. They, yeah. they, they've been there before, and uh, right now the series is 1-1, but they're going to they're gonna wake up. All right. Yeah. Nah, I, I mean, I can't hate. I'm a yeah, game fan, yeah, so I get it. It's kind of unfair. I get it. Yeah. I don't know. I, oh, my gosh. How can people get involved? Come on, let us know. Man, they can easily get in, they can find me at uh, the website is majorpreparation.com. Okay. On uh, Instagram, Major Prep Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Also, the clothing line is Major Prep underscore, underscore Apparel. Okay. Um, I'm always on those on Facebook, Ryan Majors. Mm -hmm. And you can always get involved. You can sponsor child training. You can get some gear. You can become part of it. You can become a Major Prep mentor. Just, Tons of ways nice. of being involved, and I'm 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 always looking for more people yeah. to be involved, and for for more help, for more um, people to come on board to be able to bless other people, 
Um, looking forward to putting on more events throughout the year instead of just two or three ish big events. Um, so I can always use help with that. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can always get involved in major prep. We got major prep fresh space for everybody. Awesome. Everybody can get on board. I'm trying to really make this the uh, the brand explode. Mm -hmm. Like have major blessings, major major explosions. And it takes it takes it takes a team. Yeah. So if you want to get involved, you want to get on this major prep team. You can always come on, come come. On. Just hit me up. I, mean, nice. I got you. We can we can we can join forces. Nice. No problem at all. Nice. Well, thank you. Thank you. I for thank your time you. And I appreciate you it. Sure. You're welcome. No You're welcome. This is fun. I like this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. So this is Madeline Renee. This is the second segment. We're finishing up here with the Brian Majors of Harrisburg. You heard what he said. Get involved in a major way because he has major things coming. And don't forget. Stay in touch and stay with me because she the bomb. Why not? Thank you, Brian. Right? Because yeah. I didn't even know what to say. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm working on my clothing because I'm like.